Good evening, viewers. Welcome to the Church of Nazarene Barbados District Family Forum. How are you? We do hope you had a wonderful Sunday. And um, we are glad to share with you again today, as we normally do every Sunday around this time, 5 o'clock. Um, we have been motivated to share these programs on the family because we believe that they will be instrumental in strengthening our Barbadian society. The family indeed being the core institution in any society. And uh, if we are honest, we would agree that there are some issues in our society, of surgery, violence, and so on, that are going on. And uh, the genesis of many of these ills, I would say, are um, is in the family. And therefore, our attempt in these programs is to start discussions, start discourse in your churches, in your families, um, so that we can fight against the forces, fight for the family. That's the whole idea. We are fighting for the family in these programs. And we trust you'll join us. Invite a friend or family member to share with us for the next half of an hour. With me, I have my co-host, as usual, Reverend Kelman. That's an afternoon to you, sir. And I also have with me today my sister, <laughs> uh, Dr. Patricia Saul. Dr. Saul is an educator of 47 years. Um, she taught at the primary, secondary, and tertiary level. Her last assignment was principal of Erston Teachers Training College, from which she recently retired. That's a few, I don't think even a month yet. Retired. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but I'm sure that she, ha she has, as she said, 47 years, almost five decades in education. Um, and we are glad to have you this evening, Dr. So. Thank you. All right. Very early. All right. And in a moment, yes, yes. in a moment we would hear from you yes. further. I was like intriguing, so I retired, though. Yes. This, this youthful looking lady. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes. You're welcome, Robert. Well, um, we're back with you in a moment to hear what Dr. Saul has to share, and then we will have a discourse and discussion. Back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. We are back with you. Um, as I said, Dr. Sol is our guest today, sharing with Reverend Kelman and I. Reverend Farley, um, we want this program really is the second part. Uh, last week we zeroed in on the same topic. I just want to repeat the topic for you: the impact of education on the stability and upward mobility of the family in Barbados. Um, I want to repeat that for you: the impact of education on the stability and upward mobility of the family in Barbados. Last week, we looked at the historical um, perspective of the, family, of the family and its linkages with education, indeed the church as well. Um, today, Dr. Saul will build on that. Dr. Saul, over to you. Thank you very much, Reverend Farley. Um, it's a pleasure to be here to share with you in this program. Education is an area of study that is very dear to me, and so I'm happy to be able to share with you in this context. Education, as the mighty Sparrow said in one of his calypsos, is the foundation. It is the foundation for our personal development. It's the foundation for the development of the family, and it's the foundation for the development of the country. And those countries that have been able to experience steady economic growth and development 
are the ones that have placed great emphasis on the education of their people. And Barbados, Barbados is no exception. Um, in fact, in the Barbados Development Plan of 1973 to 1977, it explicitly states that Barbados was undergoing and would continue to undergo rapid change from an elitist to an egalitarian society, as well as from a colony to an independent country, and that the educational system was expected to assist the society in making that transition a successful one, end of quote. So this really undergirds what we're discussing here this evening. And guided by this philosophy, successive Barbadian governments have spent a sizable percentage of the national budget every year on education and through this investment a wide range of education opportunities are provided for students from nursery to primary to secondary all the way to tertiary and these opportunities have contributed to the stability and the upward mobility of the Barbadian family I want to examine some educational trends in the post-independence period in Barbados and the impact that these have had on the family. I will also look at some challenges facing the system and the role of the church and the family in the process of education. Let's look at some educational trends first. It is no understatement that the introduction of free education from primary to university was a defining moment for all Barbadians. This provided opportunities for all individuals to access education at all levels, irrespective of social standing. As a result, this country is replete with examples of individuals from all social classes who have been able to access education and as a result, have been able to improve their social standing and make substantial contributions to their families and the society by extension, even to the level of prime minister. A second educational trend which has impacted the family is the expansion of early childhood educational opportunities. Now, there was a time in Barbados when only certain families who could afford to pay could have their children participate in early childhood education. However, Successive governments, again, because they recognize the importance of early childhood education as laying the foundation for later success, they have invested training and funds in early childhood education, which has improved the success of many of our children, especially those of working class parents. And then we have an increase in the emphasis on functional literacy. Now, in the early days, there was a big emphasis on basic literacy. This was really just the ability to read and write one's name and, and read a sentence. However, um, mm. as societies have become more complex, there's a need now for functional literacy, which is the ability to use reading and writing as tools to solve problems related to the work and, and life in, in general. And so our system has seen a greater emphasis on functional literacy, which helps children to deal with the everyday problems and increases their chances of being successful in school. Over the years, we've also seen a greater emphasis on technical and vocational education. Now, in the past, there was a tendency to rate academic education higher than technical and vocational education. In fact, many persons held the view, mistaken view, I should say, that technical education was for those students who were not academically inclined. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that we're getting over that notion. However, the fact that students can now access CVQ qualifications and in technical areas, and they can also access their CXCs in the traditional areas. I think this is laudable and will ensure that all students leave school with qualifications that are now following, actually, two, some students are following dual track, and some schools tell me that they have students who are doing both technical and vocational subjects at the same time. So they're going to leave school well, well prepared. 
I think families need to be aware of this so that they can advise their children accordingly. In keeping with the ministry's mantra that each child matters, we've also seen a widening of educational opportunities for children with special needs. They, um, we have that we found an increase in the off school offerings, mm -hmm. but also in, an increase in the amount of training that have been provided for teachers to make them more equipped to deal with children who are differently abled. This will certainly go a long way in ensuring that students in special education classes achieve their full potential and can contribute to the development of their families and that of their society. The phenomenon of globalization has also impacted the educational system in Barbados. So as this phenomenon continues to spread and technology continues to evolve, Barbadian students have to adapt better to meet the needs of the digital age. Additionally, we have companies now who are requesting soft skills. They want their employees to have soft skills, things such as problem solving, creative and critical thinking, communication, conflict resolution, and the ability to work collaboratively in teams. As a consequence, we've seen in our education system a greater emphasis on cooperative learning at all levels, which helps to develop skills in these areas. However, the acquisition of these skills can be achieved just by the school. The home has got to play an important role in ensuring that children develop these skills if they want them to be successful in life. And then we have the provision of lifelong learning opportunities where school leavers can continue to educate themselves long after they exited the school system. Now, this has led to employer employability opportunities for many persons who can work but at the same time continue to um, advance themselves um, um, academically. Distance education also provides opportunities for continu continuous learning, lifelong learning. But there were some, there are some challenges which I want to um, highlight also. Even though um, we've made great strides over the years, there are a few challenges which we need to address since they have the potential to thwart our progress and, uh, uh, and interrupt the development of families. One of the major challenges is complacency. I think because education has become so easily accessible and so commonplace, there are some of our students and our parents take it for granted. So you have some students who come to school, but they don't get engaged in education. Mm -hmm. They come to school, they don't bring their books, and so on. And so I think that if this is not dealt with um, at the level of the home, and probably at the level of the school, it can affect children's ability to achieve their full potential and can hamper the success of their families. Then there's a the drug culture, which has a demotivating effect on some students. They will tell you, well, I don't need to learn, I don't need to do any work because I can go and sell drugs and I can make more money if I do that. So that is something that you need to address urgently because it has the potential to demotivate students. And then you have the prevalence of gangs and the fact that there are some school children who are involved in these gangs, all right? And these gangs create a subculture which runs counter to the school. So when children are involved in or associated with these gangs, you see it in their dress, in their behavior, in, in their attitudes to school discipline, and in their approach to school work. Another challenge is, the social, is social media. Now we know the benefits of social media, but if that is not managed well, it can be a serious distractor, which can inhibit children's ability to achieve their full potential. Another challenge, that is facing education is the shift in morals and values in society. Sometimes the values of the home are not congruent with the values of the school, and hence there's a conflict, and the education of the child suffers because so much time is spent trying to get the child to accept the morals of the school. And then there's the current COVID-19 pandemic, which has catapulted our thinking into education of the future. <laughs> However, it has also brought some unique challenges for the education system in Barbados. It has forced our schools and other institutions of learning to switch from face-to-face -face teaching to online and blended approaches at very short notice. 
However, well, there are some children who have been able to make the shift quite easily. There are others who are unable to access education because of lack of devices, in some cases, lack of electricity, lack of internet connection. And so there are others who don't have the technical skills to navigate the online environment. So there are some parents who are also ill-equipped to assist their children in accessing um, the activities that are provided in the online environment. So if the situation drives on, I think it will have a negative impact on children's education. So we pray that it subsides very soon. What is the role of the church? I just want to highlight very quickly the role of the church. The church has got to see itself as a partner in the education process. There are young, many young parents who need some guidance. The church must come in there. The church must also see itself as an agent teaching the values and the morals that children will live by. We've seen a decline in this over the years. Things like honesty, integrity, empathy, kindness, respect, and love. They need to be taught by example. And there's a call for the school system also to teach these values as part of the regular teaching of subject matter content. And I want to share a quote from Theodore Roosevelt, who said, to educate a child in mind and not in, mor in morals is to educate and menace to the society. And mm -hmm. I think we've seen a lot of that around us. Mm -hmm. And finally, the, the family has a role to play in the success of their children. Research has shown that when families are interested in the education of their children, they do better. And so parents must attend PTA meetings, farm level meetings. Parents must create a home environment that is conducive um, to learning, uh, facilitates the continuous development of the children, uh, even after they're away from school. So these are some ideas which I want to share with you in terms of the impact of education on the family and the role that the church and the, the, the family um, have to play in ensuring that that education pro progresses on a, on a favorable path. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Saul. You've given us much food for thought. Um, listeners, we'll be back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. All right, Dr. Saul, you covered quite um, a bit as we look at that whole area of how education impacts stability in the family, and of course, social mobility as well. Mm -hmm. And you made a point when you were talking about challenges mm -hmm. um, and um, the, the, the one that caught my attention, of course, you, you mentioned several of them, gang culture and so on, but the one that caught my attention was complacency. Mm -hmm. You wanted to give a, a little, you know, how, how, how is that? How big a problem is that? It is. Mm -hmm. I, I remember when we were kids and we were leaving for school in the morning, our grandparents would give us a charge. They would say to us, make the most of your education. All right, you have a wonderful opportunity. You have a privilege that I didn't have. Make the most of it. So we grow up, we grow up, sorry, valuing education and we grasp it with both hands. But I think because education now it is so it's so accessible. You don't even have to buy the books. In our days, we had to buy the books. That's true. The books are free. You get some because of the COVID now, they're gonna get some. Um, laptops free and some tablets free. Everything is free. Not really that is a cost. Not really that is a cost attached <laughs> yes, to it. Yes. Somebody's paying for it. And I think that parents have a role to play yes. in instilling in children the need to value the educational opportunities that are being provided yeah. for them so yes. that they can maximize their opportunities for learning. That's a, that's a beautiful point. And it's quite hurtful though mm -hmm. when, when, when we have these opportunities and uh, our children allow them to stay by. Yeah. It's procrastination. Time loss can never be. That's recall. right. That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I want to kind of follow on to, to that question, though. Um, but I was thinking more in terms of the element of the drug culture. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember I was on a seminar some years ago, 
um, for teachers, and someone mentioned in that group of teacher that education is becoming irrelevant as a social determinant. And she was speaking primarily mm -hmm. of digital culture. How, how would you how would you respond to, to that? Because because I, I thought then that maybe there are a few French elements, mm -hmm. but um, she was seeking to suggest it's getting more entrenched that there's yeah. some more fringes. I, I mean, I've seen it working with young people. I've heard some of my colleagues speak about their experiences working in schools and trying to motivate children. It, it, is, it is real. But what I'm happy about is that it's not widespread. widespread. These are the exceptions right. rather than the rule. Mm -hmm. And I think that if, if we can get some help for the, these ones mm -hmm. who are struggling, plundering in certain ways, mm -hmm. we might be able to get them back on, back on the right path. Right track, right? Get, get help for them early. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we do not intervene mm -hmm. for these Innovation. students early enough. Yeah, and yes. so they're plundered through the system, mm -hmm. they have problems that are never addressed, then they leave the, the school system mm -hmm. feeling that the school system has wronged them. Mm -hmm. And, and they, 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 they leave bitter yes. and they take that bitterness and anger into the into the, the gangs and so on yeah, yeah. and become very destructive. It could also be a part of their own personal challenge though. Maybe they have some educational deficit or, or, or some challenge of learning and uh, because it, it makes them feel less than than than, than, than themselves really they, 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 they react mm -hmm. with the anger to the system become very antisocial. Do you think that may be a part of it as well? That is that is so true. Yeah. It is, it is a sort of a defense mechanism. Yes. Mm -hmm. For example, you may have a child who is having difficulty in reading. Right. And he might have been told by the teacher he can't read. Can't he might have been told by uh, his peers. Uh, peer peers he can't read. Mm -hmm. So what happens when there's a reading lesson? That's right. Can we create so? mm -hmm. a distraction? Yes. You yes. know, mm -hmm. he does something that takes the attention from his inability to read mm -hmm. to probably his misbehavior, mm -hmm. all right? So some of these, some of these um, behaviors that we see mm -hmm. are really children crying for help. That's right. Mm -hmm. Perhaps also, uh, we can look a little deeper because sometimes, I, I agree with that, but perhaps educators may have to look at the curriculum as well Sorry. and make some changes. Sometimes, you know, it has worked for us 25 years ago but we need to go back and see if we need to make adjustments in terms of relevance. Yeah, yeah. And, and also intervene for those people, the students who are struggling. There's some students, for example, in the area of literacy, there are many, many students sometimes struggle in this area. Mm -hmm. And uh, something the intervention does not come early enough. That's right. To I, help them over that developmental mm hump. -hmm. Right. And then they find that they fall further back, back all the time. So, yeah, you just curious, in, in my mind, we mentioned the word literacy, though. Mm -hmm. And um, sure. I've been hearing lots of discussion mm -hmm. on this idea of literacy, and someone has been suggesting, some person has been suggesting, it has been redefined. Um, the whole computer age has, has That's begun right. to redefine That's literacy. Right. Would That's you want to comment on that? That's right, because you see, <laughs> now we have a number of literacies to acquire. <laughs> it's not just basic literacy being read able to write. read and write, but it's now computer literacy, mm -hmm. scientific literacy, mm -hmm. financial literacy, mm -hmm. digital literacy, and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. And so because we become more technological, individuals are now required to perform a lot of functions on their own. That's right. You now can go do your banking online. Mm -hmm. You can book airline tickets online. Mm -hmm. You can do all your shopping online. Mm -hmm. This requires individuals to be able to interface with material, mm -hmm. printed material That's on right. their own. That's right. So the demands of literacy mm -hmm. have changed. Yeah. And it caused lots of apprehension too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Apprehension. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. Um, I will find sometimes my my twelve year old grandson is better able to maneuver mm -hmm. the computer than I, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Um, so it's a challenge for us, mm -hmm. my age now, to try to that's right come up, <laughs> and that's why we say that education is a lifelong experience. That's right. Because as societies change and become more dynamic, mm -hmm. we have to make that commensurate shift mm -hmm. if we want to be able to function effectively. You know, I'm thinking that about the implications though for teacher training. Uh -huh. um, and let's do that special area. That's my area. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? Um, because as we, as we advance 
as we become, uh, and COVID is basically catapulting us, Definitely. as someone said, I mean, in that, in that direction of um, greater online um, experiences. Yeah. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you see, though, as the, as the challenges um, for, for, for teacher, teacher training? Well, I, I think that the COVID experience has taught us some lessons. Mm -hmm. And I think it has shown us that we are stronger than we think we are. Because I remember when COVID, when the COVID pandemic um, struck in Barbados, we had just about two or so weeks to get our teachers ready. Mm -hmm. And we did it. Mm -hmm. And teachers came on board, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I think that there is a will, there is a will mm -hmm. um, in, in, out there in, in the teaching fraternity to do well. Teachers want to ensure that they charge it. All right, are educated mm -hmm. and they're willing to do all that they can. I think that sometimes we need to have some more support. support. We need to be able to have more funds available mm -hmm. because training can be sometimes mm -hmm. a little expensive. So sometimes we are limited by our budget. Mm -hmm. But um, we recognize that there is need for continuous training mm -hmm. as societies become more complex. Mm -hmm. Our teachers have got to be at the cutting edge. Okay. And, and, and I, think, I think you mentioned it's of support. And I think that, that that's crucial, but but also because I've been doing some work in terms of um, working in the online environment, some training in that regard, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the whole element of, of of social engagement, because there's a whole new yeah. uh, emergence of, of literature with regards to how do you function best mm -hmm. in that in that environment, and um, and I think that that will. That is going to be very important going forward. How do we help us to be able to understand not just the, the giving of instruction or, or material, mm -hmm. but how do you engage at every level yeah. in that environment? Yeah, it's going to be important. I think what you have to recognize now that we have moved away from just giving knowledge, just, right. just giving information. Mm -hmm. We have to teach children now how mm -hmm. to go, how to learn, how to go about finding information, and more importantly, how to create new knowledge mm -hmm. for other persons. That's right. So I think all of this, all of these changes are impacting right. on our education system right here in Barbados. Mm -hmm. I think the point you made earlier on in your presentation about functional literacy. Liter liter That's right, yeah. yeah it, it covers the, the whole ambit mm -hmm. of it's, activity. It's not just able, just being able to acquire knowledge for uh, even re reproduce verbatim, mm -hmm. all right? It's application. But it's application. Right. Right. It's analyzing, evaluating, yeah. synthesizing that information and, and, and coming up with something that's new and, and do original. And, and documenting as well, too, yes. because because we have an experience to, to share yeah. with, with the world as well, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and um, I think that's, that's important as well, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, time has gone so quickly, but there's one point I wanted to end on the whole idea. You talked about the emergence in terms of the importance of technical and vocational mm -hmm. training yeah. um, and valuing it because I think some persons have dropped to the cracks so mm -hmm. to speak because they were not seen to be academic mm -hmm. right and as a result of that they can end up thinking not accomplishing or thinking that they're not mm -hmm. they're not intelligent but you can have a genius in those areas as Definitely. you can have a genius in the area of academic but you know something that the future of our society, the future life in technical vocational. That is what is going to take us forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you look at what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to take us forward. Yeah. And right. so I'm very pleased in Barbados yeah. that we have seen fit to bite the bullet mm -hmm. and we are ensuring that our children are, are educated in that area, yes. but more importantly, they have certification right. to support well, them as they move on. This is a very broad area, we know that. But Listeners, I hope that we have cut some areas that um, kind, of, kind of let your appetite, so to speak. And um, we, we believe that education is crucial. We don't want to get complacent, but we want to play a part as parents, in terms of the church, society in general. Let's have a look and have a look at what we do and how we do what we do, that we can improve our education and value it, of course. Mm -hmm. So that, of course, it can create a stable, a more stable Barbados, mm -hmm. and of course, provide a platform for social mobility. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Father, we thank you um, for the session we have had as we focus on education. We looked at the challenges, the trends, but we pray, God, that with your help, you will guide us, that we'll be able to navigate in these difficult times, especially in the midst of, our, of the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for your special strategic guidance 
to help us through this difficult period. Thank you, Lord, for those persons who have invested through the years, and now we are more or less building on what they, the foundation they would have set. Thank you for Dr. Saul for sharing with us. I pray you'll continue to bless and guide her as well. We give you thanks, Lord, and may our country continue to prosper. As we all put our hands to the plow, we give you thanks for Christ's sake. Amen. God bless you, listeners. Thank you.